welcome back to Reading with Mani. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mani. I'm a teacher and I love talking about books. My last video got like a thousand views just now and I still can't believe it. I don't even know what on earth. But anyway, um, I also hit a hundred subscribers. So hi, I'm very glad you're here and I hope I don't disappoint with the rest of my content. Today, as you could see from the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated books for next year, for 2022. There are like nine. It's gonna be a short video, but I'm so excited for these. Um, especially because I haven't seen many people talking about them, because uh, they're not... Um, I don't know why, actually. I'm very excited about them. Anyway. I'm gonna leave the links to uh, Goodreads uh, down in the description below so that you can check for yourself um, what these books are about in more detail because if not this book this is gonna be a very long video if not. The first one is To Paradise by Hanya Yanahigara. I hope I'm saying that right. I love her. Um, her two previous books have completely destroyed me. Um, a Little Life was the first one I read and um, I have no words for it. One day I'm gonna make a video about it, um, but basically it's the saddest book I've ever read. Like, I was ugly sobbing by the end of it. Like, tears constantly streaming down my face. It was just amazing. I loved it. And then her other book, The People in the Trees, is just... I can't describe it. It's just amazing but in a different way dramatizing also i don't know i'm gonna stop rambling about her previous books and i'll tell you about this book so to paradise is actually kind of like historical fiction and science fiction i think from what i could gather um it follows three different timelines one of them is like an alternate timeline in the the end of the 19th century in the united states then there is one in the 1980s um in Manhattan, like New York, and then there's the future, like 2093 or something. Um, and from like the synopsis, I just can't wait for it. It also comes out like very soon, like January. I have already pre ordered it, and it's gonna take a while for it to get here to Uruguay. Um, but as soon as I get my hands on it, I am reading it. Like, I'm dropping everything else to read the book. I am fully prepared to be destroyed um, by this woman again. I'm gonna read to you a little bit what it is about. To Paradise is a Finnesical... How do you say that? Finnesical? I know it's end of the century, but I don't know how to say that. Anyway, it's a novel of marvelous literary effects, but above all, it is a work of emotional genius course it is because yeah the great power of this remarkable novel is driven by Yanagihara's Giga, Yana understanding of the aching desire to protect those we love partners lovers children friends family and even our fellow citizens and the pain that ensues when we cannot pain yes give it to me this woman I swear <sighs> she's gonna destroy me again and I am going to be very glad that she did. Next, I have Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Now, I discovered Emily St. John Mandel last year because, well, not this year. <laughs> That's not the next year yet. I discovered Emily St. John Mandel this year because of my best friend who lent me uh, Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel. And I am now obsessed with her writing style. I have put on my to-read list her other books, but she has a new one coming out uh, next year in April, if I remember correctly. So Sea of Tranquility is also science fiction and also kind of like speculative historical fiction from what I could gather. Uh, it also spans like a long period of time because like we follow different timelines uh, as well. I love that kind of thing in case you didn't know. So I'm going to read to you what Sea of Tranquility is about because I don't think I can 
accurately describe it. The award-winning best-selling author of Station Eleven and the Glass Hotel returns with a novel of art, time, love and plague <laughs> that takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon 300 years later and furling a, his and furling a story of humanity across centuries in space. Edwin St. Andrew is 18 years old when he crosses the Atlantic by steamship, exiled from polite society following an ill-conceived diatribe at a dinner party. He enters a forest, spellbound by the beauty of the Canadian wilderness, and suddenly hears the notes of a violin echoing in an airship terminal, an experience that shocks him to his core. Two centuries later, a famous writer named Olive Llewellyn is on a book tour. She's traveling all over Earth, but her home is a second moon colony, a place of white stones, spire towers, and artificial beauty. Within the text of Olive's best-selling pandemic novel lies a strange passage. A man plays his violin for change in the echoing corridor of an airship terminal as the trees of a forest rise around him. When Gaspary Jacques, when Gaspary Jacques Roberts, a detective in the black sky of Night City, is hired to investigate an anomaly in the North American wilderness, he then he uncovers a series of lives appended. The exiled son of an earl driven to madness, a writer trapped far from home as a pandemic ravages earth, and a childhood friend from the Night City who, like Gaspar himself, has glimpsed the chance to do something extraordinary that will disrupt the timeline of the universe. A virtuoso performance that is as human and tender as it is intellectually playful, Sea of Tranquility is a novel of time travel and metaphysics that precisely captures the reality of our current moment. I cannot wait for this book to get here. Time travel, speculative fiction, everything I love is in this book. I can't wait. I cannot wait. And if this is in any way like related to um, Station Eleven or The Glass Hotel, like if this is another companion book, I'm gonna die from excitement. I need to stop saying those kind of things. I know. I have also pre-ordered this book, so I will also be reading it as soon as it arrives. The next book on my list I am so excited about is called The Half-Life of Valerie K. by Natasha Pulley. I am so excited. I love Natasha Pulley with all my heart, as you may know if you have watched any of my other videos. Um, when we first found this book on Goodreads with my best friend, it used to be called Rust Country. So I still need to make like that switch in my head. But yes, this book comes out in July, which is very far away. Now, I'm sorry, but again, I have to read to you what this book is about, because I can't do it justice. From the author of The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Kingdoms. An epic Cold War novel set in a mysterious town in Soviet Russia. Already, I was hooked. But then it continues. In 1963, in a Siberian gulag, former, former nuclear specialist Valerie... I keep wanting to say this name as if it was like Valerie, but it's not. It's Valerie. Get it in your brain, Daniela. Former nuclear specialist Valerie Kolkhanov has mastered what it takes to survive. The right connections to the guards for access to food and cigarettes, the right pair of warm boots to avoid frostbite, frostbite and the right attitude towards the small pleasures of life so he won't go insane. But on one ordinary day, all that changes. Valeri's university mentor steps in and sweeps Valeri from the frozen prison camp to a mysterious unnamed town that houses a set of nuclear reactors and is surrounded by a forest so damaged it looks like the trees have rusted from within. In CD40, Valeri is Dr. Kokanov once more, and he's expected to serve out his prison term studying the effect of radiation on local animals. But as Valeri begins his work, he is struck by the questions his research raises. Why is there so much radiation in this area? What exactly is being hidden from the thousands who live in the town? And if he keeps looking for answers, will he live to serve out his sentence? Based on real events, in a surreal Soviet city and told with best-selling author Natasha Pulley's inimitable style, yes, the half-life of Valeri K. That was close is a sweeping new adventure for readers of Stuart Turton and Sarah Gailey. I have no idea who those two authors are, but I'm gonna be researching that because it sounds like right up my alley. I am so excited for this book, I can't tell you. Like, July can't come soon enough. I can't wait. The day that they, like, reveal the cover, I'm gonna 
freak out. It's so far away. Next on my list, I have uh, The Thursday Murder Club 3 by Richard Osman. It comes out in September, so it still doesn't have like a proper name or anything. Um, basically, The Thursday Murder Club is a, is a series of books um, that I discovered this year and that I'm obsessed with. Um, two books have come out so far, The Thursday Murder Club and then The Man Who Died Twice. I read them back to back um, just last week and I love them. Um, Richard Osman is a British um, TV personality. I've seen him in a lot of panel shows <laughs> from England and um, he has apparently written a murder mystery series um, which is very unique because the Thursday Murder Club is a club of four old people who just gather around in their retirement community to uh, look over cold cases and try to figure them out until an actual murder happens in their community and so they start investigating it. It's just so good, hilarious, um, really good mystery too. I just really, really enjoyed them and I can't wait for the next book, which again comes out in September, so I have quite a long wait for that. Next I have another book that I am very much expecting to destroy me and that is um, The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Now this is a prequel to They Both Die at the End, it's supposedly the story of um, the first two people who got the call from Death Cast telling them that they would die that day. <laughs> Can't wait uh, to be wrecked by that again because They Both Die at the End just killed me. So. Awesome, thank you, Adam. Next, I have The Cistern by Susanna Clark. There's not much information about this book. Actually, there's like, we don't know what it is about or anything, at least on Goodreads, I couldn't find uh, any, anything else. It comes out in October, so there's a lot of time for it. Uh, but Susanna Clark wrote um, Piranesi and Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which I absolutely loved both of those books. So whatever this is about, I'm gonna read. The Cistern is just such an intriguing title. I can't imagine what it's gonna be about, but I'm excited. Next to my list, I have TJ Klum's new book. So excited for it. I have only read The House in the Cerulean Sea. I am looking forward to reading Under the Whispering Door next. Um, but yeah, this book is called In the Lives of Puppets, and it's, and I'm gonna read to you because I think that this synopsis just captures everything. It's a queer retelling of Carlo Collodi's The Adventures of Pinocchio, starring an inventor named Victor, a mysterious android called Hap, hysterically angry puppet, an anxiety-riddled Roomba vacuum named Rambo, of course, and a sociopathic nursing machine, the registered automaton to care, heal, educate and drill, Nurse Ratchet for short. I can't wait for this book. I, uh, I yeah, I need it now. We don't have a month of release. It says next year, but yeah, I need it now. Next, I have Sundial by Katrina Ward. The cover alone terrifies me. I'm gonna, you're gonna see it when I put it somewhere. It's a psychological horror thriller book about a mother and her daughter. And the mother is worried about the daughter because she's seeing like um, some traits or behaviors or things that remind her of whatever happened to her in Sundial, which is um, her hometown. So she takes her there. The daughter is also worried about her. So I only read The Last House on Italy Street by this author and I I still have no words for it. You can watch my reading vlog about it if you want. Um, it just completely subverted what I expected from that book. Like it was not what I thought. And I'm hoping this is kind of the same. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that actually comes out in March, so not that far away. And also in March, and lastly, we have a book by B. Schwab that is called Gallant. This is a fantasy book. I think it's adult because it's written under the V. Schwab name and not Victoria Schwab, which I'm excited about because um, I tend to prefer adult over young adult these days because I am an adult. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, Gallant follows this girl who inherits um, who inherits this estate called Gallant, and she discovers a portal into some other parallel world with supernatural elements, I think. And uh, well, she ends up having to make a decision on whether to take up the mantle of uh, her family and become the protector of the world or something like that. I'm super excited to read this. I've only read uh, The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by B. Schwab, so I'm looking forward to reading uh, more from her that it isn't young adult. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of you young adult readers out there. It's just not my thing anymore. Like I said before, I'm gonna leave the um, I'm gonna leave the links to all of these books down there in the description so that you can go check them out for yourself. Let me know which books you are excited about uh, for next year so I can add them to my list. I'm always looking to add more books to my never-ending list because why not, right? So I think that's it for this video. Don't forget to like it if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe uh, to see me ramble more about books basically because that's what I do here. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, bye. Happy reading.